Hello, I took some pause from recording this li uh, live updates from Ukraine due to the celebration of Easter, but now I want to come back to tell you a few words about what what's happening here and how the situation is developing. Uh, I'm sure you are following the news as far as you are not tired from that. Everyone is tired and uh, people lose attention. This war comes into a kind of gray zone and I understand that. Uh, but still we need to keep some attention to the situation and to to keep in mind that people are really suffering here and I don't mean myself or my family we are in the comfort and relative safety of the city of Lviv and we had nice holidays but many people in Ukraine uh, really are under fire and under constant bombing and shelling uh, from the Russian troops. Uh, and uh, I, I chose this picture for the beginning of my presentation because I think it's very symbolic. It represents this completely shattered, destroyed building, still with some people there, and the flowers of the spring blooming and bringing the, the sense of the new life uh, into our lives. Mm, I think this is a good uh, image of Ukraine today. I'm starting with this and I will finish this presentation with, a, I think, a nice life reaffirming image that brings even a little bit humor into the situation. But generally there is nothing funny, nothing humorous. Uh, what's going on is just the continuation of the war, very intense fighting in the east, it, extremely difficult, dire situation in the city of Mariupol, which is on everyone's minds and hearts and thoughts these days. And I will try to update you basically on the details of this uh, situation as it is developing. As always in my presentations I want to give you some personal take on what's going on to add a human face to the situation and unfortunately yesterday we had the shelling of the city of Kiev, the capital. Ironically uh, the hits of Russian missiles uh, coincided with uh, the visit of the UN Secretary General and uh, Prime Minister or President uh, of Bulgaria. So a number of high-ranking diplomats and, and heads of the states were in, in Kyiv while uh, three or four rockets hit the downtown Kyiv. And uh, luckily not many casualties were caused by this strike, but by morning as they cleared out the rubbles, they found the body of a journalist, Vera Hiric, who worked for, worked for Radio Free Europe in Kyiv. As you can see, a, a, a young uh, lady who was journalist professional and he was killed, she was killed in her home uh, late evening when the rocket hit the residential area. Another casualty uh, which I just discovered in, in the social media today is this young girl Alina Perehudova who was a promising power lifter. Uh, she was just 14 and she was killed in Mariupol uh, these days. Her mother reported her death. Uh, so the city of Mariupol uh, is basically wiped out. I will show you a short video from the drone. Uh, and th the only part of Mariupol that is still being controlled by Ukrainian fighters uh, and used as a refuge for hundreds of, uh, of uh, civilians is a huge steel factory Azovstal which is being bombed and shelled and uh, there is all kinds of weapons are used against it but it has uh, very deep uh, fortified basements and so far they they managed to keep it but no one knows for how m many more hours or days they will be able to do it. You all know from the news that 
Putin promised to stop the uh, ass assault on uh, the Azovstal on the on this uh, area, but uh, he, as always he lied. Uh, Russian troops continued both on ground assault and uh, bombardments of the facility, and it it's more and more difficult for the defenders to hold. So we don't know, do not know what will happen. There is diplomatic pressure from all sides to resolve this, to get the civilians out of, at least the civilians out of there. But so far, uh, Russians do not allow it. Here is a, just a picture of one of the Azov fighters, Artem Deblenko from Mariupol. Uh, it was just, I think, a, impressive picture just taken after uh, one of the buildings collapsed from the bombings and he was covered with dust and blood. Um, so it speaks for itself, I think. Unfortunately, there are not always victims and heroes, but also criminals and perpetrators. And uh, there are some citizens of Ukraine who provide Russian troops with the information either about personal data of some people who support Ukraine and now are in the occupied territories or as this uh, person he was just recently arrested by the Ukrainian security services although he's a priest of the Russian Orthodox Church he was uh, uh, providing through his telephone, providing coordinates for artillery shelling of allegedly military objects in Luhansk region in this in the eastern Ukraine, where the most intensive fighting is going no going on now. Uh, but uh, we know that this uh, artillery hits. Uh, killed also civilians, not only Ukrainian soldiers, that would be bad enough on its own, but uh, also civilians, which later he buried as a priest, as a parish priest. So imagine the level of uh, hypocrisy and cynicism to, to send the coordinates for your own town to be hit with artillery and then as a parish priest to take care of the funeral. Uh, luckily, he is arrested and uh, probably will be brought to justice eventually if he will not be traded for some Ukrainian prisoners. We will see. But unfortunately, this um, position of the Russian Orthodox Church uh, is really, it's not an individual case. It's really becoming systematic. And I, I don't want to say that all the priests of the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine, the Moscow Patriarchate in Ukraine, are uh, doing what this man d did. No, but many of them do support uh, Russian aggression passively or somehow actively. Uh, and uh, it's no wonder because uh, at the bodies of some uh, Russian soldiers, uh, there were found uh, little icons or little leaflets of religious nature uh, with the blessing of a chaplain. And uh, here in the red square, red uh, frame, you can see the words, your objective is to wipe Ukrainian nation out of the face of the earth. To wipe the Ukrainian nation out of the face of the earth the religious instruction by a chaplain to his military flock. Um, it's an official chaplain of uh, Bryansk eparchy of the Russian Orthodox Church, someone who is inspiring his soldiers to fight against Ukrainian nationalists and to protect the fatherland from them by invading a foreign country. So it's, it's, it's really, we, you have all probably seen the uh, position of the Moscow Patriarch who was voicing his support openly a number of times to the aggression, who was awarding the heroes that returned from Ukraine uh, with uh, medals and, and uh, various uh, prizes from the, from the Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Church. 
and uh, now we have it even on the on the paper as an official blessing to to kill Ukrainian nation. Um, Ukrainian Forbes, Ukrainian edition of Forbes uh, made this uh, map of religious monuments destroyed in the fighting. You can see that there are crosses, there are uh, uh, stars of David and uh, Muslim symbols. So 85-90% of the destroyed buildings are churches and mostly of the Moscow Patriarchate. Uh, again, uh, usually these are not intentional destructions, sometimes in the fighting, sometimes intentionally. I have already spoken about that in my earlier videos, but there are over uh, something close to 200 uh, church buildings or various cultic buildings destroyed uh, in, uh, in Ukraine up to the day, uh, uh, up to date. Uh, Ukrainian security service has published a long document listing various religious uh, figures of the Russian Orthodox Church who instigated the war, starting with the Patriarch of Moscow and many Russian Orthodox bishops who voiced their support in Russia, in the Russian Federation. But there are also some names in this document of the priests and uh, some high-ranking church, Russian church officials in Ukraine who supported the invasion or helped in one or another way Russian troops. The madness in Russia continues. Uh, we are seeing constantly uh, rather wide popular support to, to the war. In this picture you can see a um, kind of mass manifestation organized by one of the schools somewhere in Russia. It's I, I think in Tatarstan in Kazan. Uh, it's like 1100 school boys and girls that formed the letter Z and it's becoming more and more like a Nazi Germany swastika thing with these manifestations and the symbols put all over the place and uh, there are many interviews on, on YouTube on various independent channels actually asking Russian people on the street whether they support the war and it seems like the majority of the society do they actually list various reasons uh, just quoting Russian propaganda but with deep persuasion that they are fighting for the right cause and it's very sad because it's not only sad because that people are so fooled by the propaganda but also that the resource of this war the human resource of this war seem to be immense because of this popular support. Obviously, the support like this doesn't mean that these people uh, or the parents of the children uh, are prepared to go to fight. Most of people uh, prefer to see the war, the triumphant Russian troops on TV. But still, unfortunately, uh, the reaction from the Russian people we were counting on that after they see the injustice of this war, they will change their position. Uh, or they will protest or put pressure on their government to stop the war, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen even with the thousands of coffins heading back to Russia. They bury their dead, but still they somehow don't manage to, to add one plus one that this war is absolutely ridiculous and harmful, first of all, to the Russian people. Anyway, we will see how this develops further. Uh, this is the video I mentioned. I'm going to put it on. It doesn't have a sound, so it just shows from... It shows from the copter parts of the city of Mariupol. And it speaks for itself, I think. So it's just completely destroyed. It's like after a nuclear... Armageddon. Uh, well, a funny picture, I promised you. It's uh, There are many rockets and mines and shells scattered around the fields in Ukraine. Uh, the, oftentimes, the missiles fired by Russian 
ships or otherwise uh, are hit by our uh, air defense and they just fell fall on the fields and people are uh, starting to plant potatoes, something that is sacred in Ukraine. Uh, the season when peasants use their fields to 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 grow potatoes, and uh, the rockets, the parts of the missiles, become like a standard, uh, usual part of the landscape. And so you can see just the bag of potatoes being dumped on on a part of a rocket and like nothing happened obviously this one cannot explode it's already used but uh, psychologically i think it's rather impressive to see this um, thank you for watching and uh, please don't lose your grip on ukraine your attention to ukraine um, we are it might seem like a routine that the, all the events are kind of the same every day uh, more destruction more death more f fighting and after more than two months we naturally lose the focus it, it turns into just one more media war uh, we are used to but uh, as one friend of mine put it this is pretty much the first war at least the first war of this scale in europe uh, the target of which is to destroy a nation to to destroy people to 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 kill to to annihilate the people of ukraine it's not just a war for a territory for economic commodities or goods it's the war it's, it's a genocidal war uh, I got a call today from a friend uh, whom um, you are donating money to to this initiative to help the front and we have been purchasing medis medical supplies especially hemostatics and uh, I helped um, a, a little squad uh, I think 12 fighters who were going to the front lines we we purchased 12 uh, medical kits for them um and uh, i got a call today that uh, one guy from this squad was uh, wounded severely he's in the intensive care he has lost his leg his kidneys don't work and um, he doesn't know what happened to the rest of the group so it might be that just that he was lost and wounded because he almost lost his memory he doesn't remember what happened um, there was an explosion a mine or or uh, a shelling but uh, nobody knows what happened to the rest of the group so i'm saying that just to give you an idea like you wake up in the morning and the first message in the facebook you get is Serhii is in the hospital, he lost his leg, his group is lost, nobody knows where they are, maybe they are alive, maybe not, I just paged through my pictures in the phone and I found this picture of the group with the with, uh, uh, medical kits I, I sent to them and it's like, it's extremely emotional to, to see that and to be thinking of this guy's uh, smiling in the picture and uh, we do not know if they are still alive or not and there are many many uh, soldiers like that and many civilians in ukraine so if you can still please support us for for the medical uh, supplies other army supplies uh, which are badly needed the western governments especially the united states but also all our european neighbors do uh, do support us uh, are extremely generous and becoming more and more effective in their supports of the weapons but still uh, we had to mobilize like 400,000 men in Ukraine well, mostly men but fighters uh, there are also women among them so 400,000 persons were mobilized and it's impossible for for the country like Ukraine to provide them with equipment in such a short time 
uh, and if uh, like heavy weaponry is being sent by our partners, still there are many things that are needed by soldiers that have to be provided by by the public, by the civil society. And that's what we are trying to do with your support. So please support us by watching this video, play, uh, posting your comments, sharing, and if you can, uh, with donations. We all understand that you have already donated uh, to various Ukrainian organizations or organizations in your country. We do not want to burden, to overburden you with that. But if you have an a possibility that's always uh, appreciated and will be used with uh, utmost care and conscientiously. Thank you very much.